Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to begin with a poem from W.H. Auden, uh, American, American poet. He wrote, Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos, and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin and let the mourners come. Let airplanes circle moaning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message that he is dead. Put crepe bows around the white necks of the public doves and let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk and my song. I thought that love would last forever, but I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood, for nothing now can ever come to any good. As I sat in the empty church last night uh, after our Monday Thursday service, Auden's poem came to Joanne, my wife, and she and I spoke of it. It captures so well the nature of grief and how the world keeps spinning, even in the midst of loss. How alone in a church praying can feel so alone on this day as a Christian as the world continues all around us. It captures the lostness of someone called a friend, of someone that we loved and were loved by. The poem captures the silence and vanquished moment, I think, of Good Friday. Friday. Maybe even the feelings of Jesus' own friends, his closest followers. Maybe the hushed conversation in the home of Lazarus between he and Mary and Martha. I can imagine that. From the beginning, Christians came to the site of Jesus' crucifixion, and they prayed. When Helena, a Christian, and Constantine's mother came to Jerusalem, some 200 years later, people, people were still praying at the trash heap upon which he was crucified. 300 years later, the pilgrim Egeria traveled to Jerusalem, and there in Holy Week, she records palm processions, prayers in the gardens, services at the church, all continuing the tradition of Holy Week and what is called the Triduum, a remembrance by Christianity that the cruciform historical event of Jesus' death and burial is at its center. Tonight, like Christians around the world, we pause for the holiest of days amidst the three days of a sacred time. Here we give thanks to a power greater than ourselves outside of the systems and evils of this world which came to save us. The inextricable, inextricable connection between birth and death 
and the life of the incarnation of Jesus all reveals in this moment a reality that only, only a mighty power from outside our creation can rectify what good intentions, ethics, well wishes, attempts at righteousness, attempts at justice, which have all failed. Here in this historic moment, death and evil and all the dominions of the world meet Jesus with his arms wide open. Here at Golgotha, the crossroads of God, death meets the divine and loses. Here death swallows earth and meets heaven. Here death loses its power, preaches the great Saint Chrysostom. Jesus chooses to offer himself freely, believing that this was the moment of divine intervention in the world of humanity. The cross and resurrection are the chosen actions of God. Think about the paradox, weakness in the face of power, peace in the face of violence, self-emptying in the face of the human desire to seek safety. Here is the nonsensical, foolish power of God. Here is God's choice to save us. Here is God's singular action to recapitulate, to remake the ending of the human brokenness and sin and death. We lean on theologian Fleming Rutledge here. Here in the cross is, and I quote, the power of God to make right what has been wrong in what we see by faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ on the third day. For unless God is the one who raises the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist, there cannot be serious talk of forgiveness for the worst of the worst. The quotidian of offenses against our common humanity that cause marriages to fail and friendships to end, enterprises to collapse and silent misery to be the common lot of millions. Here, on this day, God buries it all. What we do today on this Gospel of the Cross day is nothing other than to take on 2,000 plus years of memory. Just as the first Christians. What we do is we come to worship, to give thanks for what God has done, for how God has met evil and won, how God has met our sin, and how God met death on the cross of Jesus. We come and we give thanks. We remember humbly Jesus' self-sacrifice and the gift that seems so foolish and so unimaginable, the gift of immortal love, which is ours, undeservedly so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.